Hey everybody, Katrina Rasbold, Greener Bruja here, and I actually just finished a video that was uh, about how to dress a candle, and now we're going to talk about the other end of the, the process, which is how to get rid of a candle, and a lot of people have asked me, and I think I answered it in one of the Ask a Bruja segments, but uh, they, they've asked about how to dispose of the candle glass once it's finished, and really, um, how you do that is going to depend on the nature of the candle that you were working with. There are a couple of different kinds of glass candles that uh, exist out there on the market. And some are for some really benevolent uses and some are for some really not so benevolent control -y type issues. So I brought you two examples here of candles that are finished. So I can show you how to get rid of them, how to dispose of them, waste stream them, as we used to call when I was a hazmat technician. Can you believe I did that? I totally did that. Anyway. And for the Air Force, so rocket fuel, and sh <laughs> really. Anyway, so this is a 7 African Powers candle. And like the Hand of Glory candle that I mentioned on a previous video today, uh, the 7 African Powers candle is a multitasker. It gets more than one thing done. Usually with these candles, you're focusing on one, one target, one idea, one concept. But 7 African Powers is a player player, man. It will work on seven different ideas at once. And those are love and passion, Wisdom, power, health, luck and opportunities, uh, justice and protection, and fertility and success. So that's the overall translation of it. And so it's all a very positive, loving thing. And to show you how pretty and wonderful the uh, the intention of this candle is, you can see there's a good bit of, of white soot around the top after it's burned, meaning that there was divine um, assistance with this candle. And the universe wanted what this client wanted. So this being a super happy candle that uh, had only good intention, you could dispose of this in a few ways. Now what I would do, because I like to hang on to any energy that's remaining in this candle glass, is I would clean it out and use it as a pencil holder, hold knitting needles in it. Um, you know, you could even put sand in it and, burn, and use it, put your stick incense in it as an incense burner. Or you can just clean it out and just waste stream it with your um, with your recycling. There's nothing wrong with that. It's it's just glass in there. So you can recycle these and some glass, some candles have it, this one a little bit, where you can pull off the label and just recycle the glass. So if the candle was used for a benevolent purpose and only a benevolent purpose, then you can just recycle it or repurpose it or you can just throw it away. Now we have the other subset of candles. This is a shut your mouth candle. That is a more controlling candle. So this would be candles like uh, destroy all the things, death unto my enemies, control candles, obsess about me candles, anything affecting the free will of another person or the idea is to control the actions of another person or to really just basically start some shit. You would you dispose of those candles in a different way. These candles, you don't want somebody to just come up on. So with the seven African powers, if my trash man picks this up and it's still got some energy left in it, well, good for the trash man. He's going to have a good day. But I wouldn't want him to have to mess with this. I wouldn't want him to have to mess with some of the the more aggressive candles. That's a nice way to put it. You'll even see that, yeah, this is a shut your mouth candle. And so it's intended to stop gossip or people who are talking crap about you that's affecting your quality of life in some way. And you really want to shut them up. And people that are running their mouths don't like to be shut up. So you can see that we've got a lot of opposition, a lot of resistance to this spell work up here at the top, shown through the dark soot. And then it gets all clear like that. The rest of the way down, meaning we got through the opposition and these people did shut their mouths. So um, we wouldn't want this to just be out there for people to grab. We want to make sure that we've been responsible and gotten rid of this. So what I do with the more aggressive candles like this is I go to the thrift stores and I go to uh, yard sales and things like that and I buy cheap, really cheap pillowcases, a uh, dollar, 50 cents a piece. And I'll take one of those pillowcases. I don't care if I ever see it again. I put the candle inside and then I take a hammer. I usually use a rock hammer or a claw hammer and I just wail on that sucker and break the candle into a bazillion pieces, which releases the rest of the energy, finishes the spell, makes sure that this is neutral. And then I close it up real tight and I bury it in the ground and I bury it somewhere far away from me because I don't want this in my world. I don't want this 
affecting my yard or my situation, even though I know it's neutral, I just don't want it there because I do a lot of work for clients. I don't want 50 shut your mouth clients in my backyard. So we um, just destroy it, release the energy, and then bury it somewhere far away. Now, I live in Grizzly Flats, California, and this is a serious remote location. I have to drive literally, no lie, 25 minutes to get a gallon of gas or a gallon of milk. Uh, we are way off the grid, but we got a lot of woods back here, man. You can hide bodies like you like you would not believe. But I'll go way, way out in the woods that I know will never be disturbed. Dig really deep and bury that uh, that pillowcase somewhere far away where I know nobody's going to be able to get to it. Now that's going to be harder for you if you are living in a city. So you really got to think this through. You do not want to bury this close to you, though. Anything that had uh, a controlling or kind of a questionable nature to it, especially something that's like destroy all the things. Don't put that in your backyard. Let's just use some common sense. Now, on the other side, if you got the good candle that's happy and is doing wonderful things, one of the things you could do if you did want to bury it is, is bury it, even bash it up. That's okay too, but bury it by your front doorstep to bring all those things to you and keep it closed. So that's the rule with any kind of magical work or disposing of any kind of leftovers from magical work is if it's if it's something that's a little more um, controlling or aggressive bury it far away from you don't bury it close to you if it's something that's more benevolent and kind or you're trying to draw somebody to you bury it by your front door bury it somewhere close to you now it used to be uh, that Hootie recommended that you do these at a crossroads. Crossroads work can be very dangerous when you're living in a city, so take it easy there. Uh, if you can find a crossroads where you can do it, that's great, but don't get arrested or um, run over trying to do that. It's just not worth it. Um, another thing that Hoodoo and Appalachian Granny Magic used to recommend is that we throw our magical leav leavings into a living body of water, meaning a body of water that moves like a creek that's flowing. And that is now called littering and we can get arrested for that. So don't do that. So those are the ways that I recommend disposing of your candle glasses when you're finished with them. I really hope that helps. Now feel free to ask questions in the comments. I'm happy to reply. And yes, I really will reply. You can also go to twosistersbotanica.com and email me there. Y'all take care and happy candle burning. Unless it's not a happy candle burning, then successful candle burning to you.